morning. You guys doing good? Come on. I mean, are we awake this morning? Yeah, thank you, Holy Spirit, for being here. I am so excited about today. Um, I've just been praying this week and asking the Lord what he, what he wanted to tell you all, and um, we're going to hear about that here in just a minute. How many, how many of you got to go minister to someone this week? Like pray for someone, pray for healing. I mean, raise your hand if you got to go pray for someone. You know, this week was really encouraging because I got to pray for someone and, I, and a couple different people over the phone just by paying bills. You ever pray for someone paying bills? You call and you're like, you're going to pay a bill and you say, at the end of your phone call, you say, is there anything I can pray for you about? And, um, and they're kind of set back a minute because they're like, no one's ever asked that. And I said, you know, I, I know the call is probably recorded and everything, but, but is it okay if I pray with you right now? They're like, uh, yeah. So I would pray and I'd speak into their lives. And man, you could, you could, you could feel the other side. That you, could, you could feel the tears of what they were going through because I, I'm a seer and I see things and I could literally read what was going on in their life. But I could speak into that. How that moves people, how that moves God. You guys are a powerful, powerful group of people. I want you to never be focused on numbers. It's not about numbers. It's about people that carry power coming together and glorifying Him. If this was all we had in this city, to reach this city, it would be enough. If there was two it would be enough. But God has given us more. Let's do with what he's given us. Let's rock this place. Let's move this city. Thank you, Uwe, for message number one. Thank you for message number two. Here we go with the third one. Not often you can go to church and get three messages. Randy was number one. Sorry, I, 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 Randy was number one. One, two, three. This is number four. Five's my favorite number, so maybe Shelly should come up and talk a minute, and then I could be number five. We, we, this, this, this coming um, Monday, tomorrow, we celebrate our 10th wedding anniversary. Um, so we're just excited to um, get to go pray with and get to go minister to another couple that their anniversary is on the same day. We didn't know that till just this past week, but it's a couple we're going to minister to, and and the that very day, their anniversary, some stuff happened and it kind of rent the moment, so they kind of don't celebrate that anymore. But we're going to speak back into that that day. We're going to speak life back into that day, and bring it back to life for them. So I'm just so excited we get to do that. If you have your Bibles this morning. To stand this morning. Actually, you, you don't have to stand because listen, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna read through it. You might be standing for a minute. Randy had you stand. Hallelujah. Ephesians chapter three, starting with verse fourteen. Give you a minute to turn there. I don't know all of you have your Bibles with you. Ephesians chapter 3, starting with verse 14. It's for this cause I bow my knee unto the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. Read down the King James Version. Of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. That he would grant you according to the riches of his glory. To be strengthened with might in his spirit in the inner man. Listen to this, what it's saying. That he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. We have to have Holy Spirit inside of us, moving inside of us, dwelling inside of us, living inside of us. That Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that you, ye being rooted 
and grounded in love. And perfect love casts out fear. These are things that he's telling us that we must do, that we must have Holy Spirit. We must believe in Christ by faith and be rooted in love. And God is love. That you may be able to comprehend with all saints. Listen to this. Comprehend with all saints. That's all of us. The breadth, the length, the depth, and the height. And to know the love of Christ which passeth all knowledge. That ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. This is my key verse. Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us. Thank you, Father. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you for today, for this message, Lord God, that you are moving in this house. You are moving with power and might and authority. Father, we reign under your authority. Give you this day. We love you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. So in that verse number 20, listen. You guys, the light's all the way up. Let me get some more lights in here. Uh, it says, Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power of that works in us. Have you ever tried to put God in a box? Many people have. Have any of you ever had a snake? Like growing up had a snake? Like a boa constrictor? Anybody have like a boa constrictor or anything? Snakes are not bad guys. They're just snakes are snakes. They're just God created them, you know. Just because the enemy used something for bad, it doesn't mean that the snake itself was bad. But listen, a boa constrictor, I found one one day. I was driving home, and, and, and I was pulling in, in the driveway. Shelly and I were in the RV up in, in before this ministry. And um, and I saw it across the road in, in, or across the, the driveway, and it was a gravel driveway. And it was about six feet long, maybe a little bit longer than six feet. So I pulled in, I saw it because it was, it was just trying to go across the ground. It was about this tall because when they go across the ground, they'll, they'll like narrow themselves and he was weaving across the ground and I thought whoa where did that come from so I went got on my truck and picked it up not afraid I picked him up and I took him to Shelly and I said look at this thing and she's like what are you doing with that what are you doing with a snake and I believe it was a red boa was it a red boa is what it was I think that's what they called it but anyhow, we called the Humane Society, and they end up coming out. The call, cops come out first and everything, and they wouldn't touch it. They said, you just hold on to it. They wouldn't have anything to do with it. And, um, and I had, and I, and I was trying to figure out where a boa would come from, you know, out in the, like, they're not out in the wild here. And I thought, well, where did a boa come from? So after the Humane Society had came and, and they'd taken the boa constrictor away, I went and I saw that it, there was a, I was just walking through the woods and just different, I said, it's got to be coming because I looked for where it was coming from. And there, someone had taken that boa, it was their pet, and it had a glass container about this, this wide, about this tall, about that deep, and they had dumped it out. They were done with it, they were done messing with it, and they dumped it out. The thing was starving. I, fed, I actually, before they come, I actually went and got some um, dead mice, and um, we went, and they just ate them all. It was hungry. And I loved, I, lo I mean, I, it was a neat experience to, to have it, you know, hold it and, and, and uh, talk with it, pray with it, and things like that. I mean, we do that. We pray, we, we pray with the ducks in the mornings. I mean, we pray, we pray with animals all the time. Um, we pray with our dogs. We just pray. I mean, it's like, you know, that God created them. And so, and so this morning, I want to show you that, that, when you take an animal like that and you put it into a box, it will only get as big as the box that you put it in. It can't get no bigger. It conforms to the box, and it adapts and it conforms to the box. But you put one of those things out in nature and let it grow to its full extent. There's been some that were found that were 18 feet, and there's one that, that they is skeptical 
but, they, but it was a pastor that found it, and they said it was 50 feet long. They've got some pictures. they got overhead pictures of it, but um, that's all the pictures that they have of it. But just we'll go with the 18 because we know that, was, that is a fact. 18 feet long. But if you would have kept that thing in a box, it would have stayed as small as six feet is all it would have been, or even smaller. Some of them are even smaller now because you put them in little containers. What about the dreams and visions that God has for you? If you contain them in a small little box, I mean, I've got all these little, I, I got these, these from, the, from the daycare room, but um, let's just act like these are boxes. And imagine that you take everything that God has for you and you put it in a small little container. That's all you're going to get. I got them, they're soft because I'm going to throw them in a little bit. I'm going to throw them at you in a, here, here in a minute. Well, just imagine putting God in a box. Do you limit God? I mean, I can honestly say there was a time that I did limit God. I thought, this is all he can do. This is where we're at. This is all that's going to happen. I remember there was a time that I was... Uh, having some financial issues this was years ago and, and, I, and, and, I, and I went down I was just crying to the Lord and I said Lord I don't know what I'm going to do I don't know how I'm going to do this and he said have I ever let you down I said no he said then why would I start now from that time forward it built my faith and my faith strengthened I said God I will not doubt you I will not, I will not question you or doubt anything that you have for me so that from that moment forward I opened my box my box is actually flattened out on every side because it's the world now. That's how big your box should be because that's how big God is. You might not have everything that you want from God right now or you might not have all your dreams or desires fulfilled right now, but you keep pressing toward Him. You keep doing what God's called you to do. You pray. Seek His face. And watch what gets added into you. Remember when you were a kid and you went to Sunday school? Sang all them powerful songs. God is a mighty God. He's strong. He's a high God. He's a big God. Remember that? You guys remember singing them songs? I didn't go to church as a kid. I got to go to vacation Bible school every now and then. And I was probably the one that caused all the trouble at the vacation Bible school. And, uh, you know, because I was just an unruly little brat. And um, but some of you have been to church as kids and you've grown up and you're thinking God's a big, 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 big God and then all of a sudden you grow up and life gets in the way all the cares of life get in the way and all of a sudden you start taking all that bigness of God and you start kind of narrowing it down with theology and all the things that men speak into it and all the, the things that they try to speak into who Jesus is and who God is and all the characteristics they did it back then they do it still in Matthew 6 verse 13 through 17 Jesus asked the disciples a question he said who, who do men say that I am who do men say that I am Jesus asked the disciples this and they said well some say that you're John the Baptist some say that you're Elijah Some say that you're Jeremiah. Some say that you're one of the prophets. And he said to Peter, he said, but Peter, who do you say that I am? Peter said, you're the Christ, the son of the living God. And he said, these things wasn't revealed to you from my, from flesh or blood, but, it, but from my father in heaven revealed these things to you. We cannot look at the circumstances of the world going on. We have to have the things revealed to us from God. Not from man, not from what we see. And we cannot put God in a box from the things that we see going on around us. But many of you have. Cody, I'm glad that you've not put God in a box. He did it one time. He put God in a box. He was walking on the streets doing drugs, dealing drugs thinking this is all I could ever be. God changed that. He can change it for you. Uve, I know you've been in the box before. 
going to change today. The box that you have today is going to dissipate. It doesn't matter what size your box is. Listen, you can have big boxes. You can put God in a big box with you. And that's all that you're going to get is whatever's in that box is all you're going to get. It is. It's all you're going to have in life. Whatever's in that box. And it can be a bunch of great stuff. You can have a bunch of great stuff in that box. God is in there with you, doing stuff with you, but you're not going to, you're not going to box him as a whole. You individually, because of your minute thinking or your, your little, little thinking, you can box God in into your thinking pattern. But really, you haven't boxed him in. I mean, you've taken a piece of God into your thinking, and he gets to be in that part of your life. And I was going to throw this one at you, but I think it's too big. <laughs> when in fact, God is an infinite God. Our God is an infinite God. He don't end. There's no end to our God. There's no beginning to our God, no end to our God. This is the God that you serve. There's no, no end to him. I mean, imagine what it would, I mean, can you even imagine that there's no end? Like, we're going to live in eternity with no end. Someone describes it as taking the, a big steel ball the size of the earth. One time every million years, an eagle flies by and brushes its wing against the, the ball. And when the ball finally dissipates because of the friction of the wing of the eagle, then the world would end. It would all end if that made any sense to any of you. It ain't going to happen. No matter how many times the eagle sweeps its wing against the still earth, it's not going to happen. It's not going to disappear. We're going to live forever when we say, Jesus, come into my heart, live in my life. We're going to live forever and always. And some of you think, well, what are we going to do? If you knew what you were going to do, your mind couldn't even comprehend that. You would just explode. There's going to be so much that we're going to do beyond. <laughs> this is nothing. What we get to do right now is nothing compared to what we're going to do. What we have right now is nothing compared to what we're going to have. But we can have right now access to heaven and have all the dreams that he wants for us. If we would just lean in and press in. It's true. But some of us have him in a box. Might be this kind of a box. Catch it, Tammy. We didn't record that. We're good. Our God never changes. It's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. The way we reach people sometimes changes. We're working with a whole different group of people. Back in the 50s, you reach people a certain way. Today, you have to reach them in a different way. The method might be different, but the message is the same. God has no need at all. Can you imagine that, not having a need? Like not needing anything at all. You know, millionaires, when the millionaire was over in the other building... And he cried and he said to me, you tell your people that you have something I don't have. A millionaire said, you tell your people that you have something that I don't have. I have all the money. I can have anything I want. But he didn't have that relationship. God has it all. When you come into that relationship, he will give you all of your heart's desires. But we put him in a box. So all we get is just a few things we have in life. He's all powerful. He's all knowing. You know when you when you when when you sin, you try to go behind the door, and you, and you go back here and you, and you just kind of hide and you do your thing. You know when no one's around and you're just like on your computer or wherever you're at and you just like no one sees me. No one knows what's going on. God knows. Father in heaven knows. Peek out always and you look and see if anybody's looking. God knows. 
He always knows. You can't change that. You can't change the fact that God knows what you're doing. I'm not trying to bring condemnation on any one of you, but I'm saying let's get it cleaned up. Walk in Him, not in sin. Walk in all that He has for us. He's all knowing. He's always everywhere. Can you imagine that? God is always everywhere. I made a call this morning to Texas. Guess what? He was there. I made a call to Michigan this morning. Guess what? He was in Michigan this morning, too. And in Texas. Made a call to North Carolina. Guess what? He was there. Made a call to Georgia. Guess what? God was there. And here we are in Indiana. He's here. That's the God you serve. Do you realize that's the God you serve? He's everywhere at all the time. He's full of wisdom. You want to know something? Go to God. So chilly yesterday I said, I'm going to start a new fad. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to walk around town. I'm going to have my, have my Bible everywhere I go. I'm going to go out to eat with my wife. We're both going to be sitting there. We're both going to have our head in our Bible. I'm just going to walk around. You know, traffic, traffic light, wait, make people wait. Just walking around. I mean, we're just like, I mean, we do, it, we do it with our phones. We do it with our phones to try to get knowledge and information from the world to try to find out what everybody's doing. I almost did this. You ever did that? Anybody ever did that? The piece of paper, try to scroll it and make it bigger? It worked. If you want, listen, if you want to know something, go to God. He's got all the wisdom right here. This, this is more than the internet can hold. And if you want more and it's not in there, just read between the, just stretch the lines a little bit and ask God to show you something. Open it up, stick your head inside and see the story. See the people in the story and go, whoa, what is going on in here? Wow. Pull back out and go in, whoa, look at this. God, you're so amazing. That's how I read my Bible. That's what makes me understand it so well. That I get inside the story. I get inside his heart. I get inside of his mind, what he's doing. What's going on at the, the time. Who's around? I mean, check it out. I mean, when you talk about Peter and them all in the boat and stuff, you're like, well, who all is here? And you're thinking, who all the characters are here? And you start naming them all, looking and going, wow. Wow. What size is the boat that they're in? Because they step up into the boat. How big is the boat? This lay, where was he sleeping at? What did it look like? What did the clouds look like when he said, peace be still? Take God out of the box. He's always right all the time. So when you think, well, God messed this up or he did this, no, he did not. You messed it up. He's always right all the time in every situation. Any fault or any failures on our end? Not on his end. And he's full of grace. Our God is so full of grace that he took a sinner like me. me into relationship with him. He stood at my door and he knocked. I would say, I don't have time. He knocked. I would say, I don't have time. Remember the knobs on your side, not on his. You have to open that door to him. But we put God in a box. And we can have the box even bigger. I mean, we can have, we can have a super big box. 
We can have a huge box. I mean, like, this, this box back here. I mean, this has got some cool stuff. Now, this is my box back here. I mean, this thing's got, a, like, a pool inside of it. I've got, ta- I mean, the water's like 98 degrees in this pool. This is my box in here. I've got a camera back here to record stuff. I've got a bleachers to sit on. I've got vacuums to clean the floor with. I even got some mints back here. I've got a picture, prayer cloths, some paint. I can paint something. Kitchen in the other part of this. But even as big as this is, if I limited God, this was all, this is all I would get. If I limited him, this is all I would get. It's nice and all. But it's all I would have. So do you want more? I want more. I want everything he has for me. I want so much more. I mean, there's, man, there's so much to be had with, with, with God. Start throwing them here in a minute. <laughs> How many leaders do we have in the house? Like leaders of your family. How many of you consider yourself a leader in the family? Okay. How many of you know anything about trucking, truck drivers? Yeah. How many of you know anything about being on the road, being mad at truck drivers because they're like, they're side by side? Check this out. We're going we're gonna to build something here. So you got this truck right here on this two-lane high, this, this highway, not a two-lane because it would be going the wrong way. You got these two trucks sitting here. They're supposed to pass each other. But you know, the truck, some of the trucks have regulators and stuff on them. They can't get past quick enough, so they're like battling those hills. So you got these trucks, and all of a sudden, all of a sudden, all the cars start coming behind them, and they start piling up behind them. You got this thing. I don't know what kind of car that is, but you got all these things. They're necessarily, look, they just keep piling up, and they get slower and slower. And you got these trucks, and sometimes I think they do it on purpose. I really do. And all of a sudden, you get this big old backup of traffic back here. You got all these things going on. Look at all this. Cars are piling up. And sometimes when they do this, it causes a wreck. People are not paying attention. I wanted to build so bad, Steve. I loved playing when I was a kid. Man, I, I was creative as a kid. You should have seen my stuff. I had to make it all from dirt. I did, and you should have seen my playground. I, I would have a field of playground, and I would have all these dirt roads and all this stuff. I would never play on it. I would just build it, stage, stage everything. I don't know. I don't know where that come from. But you got these two trucks right here, and I want to I represent, I want to make these things represent the head of a family. And if you're in a box, if, if, if you're in a box, you're going to box the rest of this, these people in. The rest of your family is going to be boxed in because that's what you've done now. You created a box. So everyone has to go according to how you go, especially when you're right there. And God don't want us to be in a box. God don't want us to bring our family in a box. We, he wants our children to have the open mind to, to, to follow our lead as leaders. Knowing who we are in Christ. But we're only going to take them as far as we go. We're only going to be able to let them have as much as we grab a hold of. Until they have their own encounter with Jesus. Until they have their own walk with Jesus. That's all they're going to get. I want more for my family. I ain't always did it right. I haven't always did it right. I look back and there's things that I would... Not in my own life that I would change, but there are things, there's ways I would raise my children a little bit differently. If I'm getting a second chance with my grandchildren, I don't get to see them as much as I did my children. You know, because your kids are there every day and your grandkids are not. They all live about an hour, a little over an hour away. So dads and moms, leaders, church leaders, I encourage you to not put God in a box. Be that leader. Stop the traffic jam. Let let people do what they're going to do. Lead according to how God would have you lead. Don't waver. 
don't change because someone wants you to change. When I come in a relationship with Shelly 10 years ago, I come into it not wanting to change her to conform to me, but I wanted to be who I could be. Her. He come in the same way. Now we've bettered each other. No limits. We started this church with 18 people. Again, I want to remind you, I did not emphasize, did not ask to come here. I did not ask God. Can I go to Martinsville? Start a church. Didn't do it. But he asked me. And I want you to understand, there has to be an honor with that. I'm not asking you to... to do anything really but I'm, I'm just saying you have to understand that I didn't want to be here but because God is not in the box in my life I'm here and I've watched this go from 18 people from the park to the youth center 265 205 195 who knows where it's going to go but I'm not going to stop. I'm going to continue to grow a people and a ministry. If it stops right here with this group of people, I'm okay with that. If it grows to a thousand, I'm okay with that. But I want him to be the center of it, no matter what it is. No matter what it is. I'm going to throw these out here. Donnie, can you catch this? Who we got here? Steve? Right? Dan? Do that one low. Sorry about that. Do that one so she didn't trip. Guys, this is small. All right. Right over here. Who wants this? Got it. We're going to do something here in just a second. I'm going to get all these out of here. Shelly, take that. Kurt, grab that one. What do we got? Randy. Sheila. My good friend Riley back here. Riley was my former bass player in the band called Sacred. And uh, we welcome you and your family here today, Riley. It's so good to have him here. Hallelujah. Who, who don't have one? Here you go. Rosalind, this is yours. All right. I didn't play baseball. I didn't play any sports. They kicked me out of track because I had long hair, so I never got into sports. So <laughs> now I don't have any. <laughs> I know we're over a little bit. It's called Uve. Give an inch, they take a mile. <laughs> Babe, we'll get that big time clock up here soon. Um, <laughs> or let's stand. Keep your boxes. We're going to do a prophetic act this morning. I want you to come forward. I, listen, if, if, if you feel like you have boxed God in in any way in your life, if you have boxed him in in your mind, in your thinking, and what he has for you, and the gifts for you, and the financial part of your life, if you have boxed him in in any way and you think, this is all I could ever have, this is all I could ever be, this is all that he wants for me, that's a lie. There's so much more that you can have. We've got two cancer patients right here that have life because of Jesus. Life, stage four cancer, life because of Jesus. God can transform your life to be whatever he has called you to be if you will let him, if you will give him control and charge of your life. He will do whatever you let him do. You box him in, that's all you're going to get is what's in that box. 
I never thought I would ever, listen, as a 16-year-old boy, smoking pot, never ever thought I would be able to go to a third world country. I've been to three different countries. Never thought I would, I mean, I never even my wildest, wildest dreams thought I would do anything like that. Yet I've been over to these countries, I've ministered to people, told them about the love of Jesus, worshipped with them. There's so much more. Bounty hunting. You know, I got in law enforcement. I'm going to tell you how I got in law enforcement. I saw this, this cop pull this guy over, and I saw what had happened. And for, for all of a sudden, I thought, well, that would be pretty cool to be able to do that. I mean, that's, that's, how, it, that's how it started in my spirit. Because, you know, I went from, from, from drug user, drug dealer to, well, that would be pretty cool to be on that side of it. So this is what I did. I lived in a little bitty town called Alamo, Indiana, and I went to their town board. They didn't have a cop in their town. I went to the town board, and I said, hey, I'd like to be your cop. I mean, this is really how it happened. I said, I'd like to be your cop. And I said, I'll do it for free. And it started, and it started, and it started that way. And they said, well, well, we, well, we'd have to send you to the police academy. And I said, well, all right, let's do it. I didn't even have my GED. Like, I had to have a GED to get into the police academy. I think, well, how am I going to do this? So I studied for my test. I got my GED the day I went to the academy. They hired me for nothing. It started out that way. Then they started paying me. But, but, but that's how it works. I dreamed. I said, well, that would be cool. Bam, here we go. 5-0. Man, I'm like, whoop, 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 whoop. I loved being a cop, man. I loved the part of it that I would pull somebody over, and they would be like, like man, we're, we're done now. Man, we're getting it now have their plates all jacked up. Remember when you used to be like change the numbers on your plates? Anybody ever did that? Liars. You guys lie. Jesus help them. Help them all. But I mean I would pull someone over and I would say man and they would be like man it's, we're, we're done. We're going to jail. Whatever. Whatever. I pull them over and say hey we need to get that fixed. <laughs> Looks like you've got a marker out and change your plates a little bit. We need to, we need to make sure we get that fixed. And that was my favorite part of the job, was to let people off. I mean, that was my favorite part of the job, was like, get them all pumped up. Like, man, we're going, we're going down now. Like, now listen, listen, listen. Even with bounty hunting, my favorite part of the job was saying, God loves you so much. We have something for you. This is not who you are. It's not who you are. We have so much more, because they had themselves in this little box. This is all they could ever be because this is all they grew up in. Because they've been beaten, abused in all different ways. But man, God has so much more. Through forgiveness. Through love. He's got so much more. You ain't got any warrants, do you? (laughs) He's running out the back door. I'm coming out that door to get him. No, listen. I'm going to pray, and what we're going to do is we're just going to, if you have any God in any box, in any part of your life, even if it's just part of your life, part of your thinking, I want you just to come up, and, and there's been God, not going to be my pray with you, just, just to come up and make that representation. Be bold and say, you know what, I, I have box God in, in this area, in that area, and, and, I, and I, want to, I want to open that box up. You know, you get the best deal with, it, with an open box. I'm a deal, man, I'm a deal maker, man. I go and I make deals, and I, like, I look for the open box first. You get the best deal with an open box. You're going to get the best deal with Jesus being an open box. Let, let him have his way with you. Father, we just thank you, Lord, right now for your people. Thank you, Lord, that we're opening the boxes right now. The prophetic, we're opening the boxes, God, to your heart, to all you have for us. Magnify you, we do it. Love you. No longer will we box you in as a people. You have all reign, all authority. Our lives are yours. We are yours. Church is yours. Not our ministry. This is our yes. Say yes this morning to an open box. Let you do what you want to do. All right, Faye's going to play a song, and then we're going to come and pray. Listen.
come up and just, just you don't even have to really just, just come up and say, I want to change my life. I want, I want something other than the box that I put myself in. Come on, guys, because I know, I know we've put ourselves in boxes. I had to pray this week, listen, as we're coming up. I, yesterday even. Yesterday even. And you can throw your boxes up on the stage if you want to bring them back. Yesterday even. Put all the windows down. I'm driving and I said, Coach Shelly and my wife, I said, listen, I'm going to drive with all the windows down. I want to just drive. And, and she didn't want the hair, her hair blowing in the wind. So she rose her windows up. And I said, I want all the windows down. I said, I want to see, I want to feel the hair, the wind in my hair. She kept her window up. And so I got real quiet. And I said, Lord, what is this? He said, you want to have it your way. <laughs> but I did. I wanted to have it my way. <laughs> I wanted all the windows down. And then really at the end of it, he got to the real deal of why I wanted all my windows down. Because it looked cool. It didn't look cool with one window up and the rest of them down. But it looked cool with all of them down. He said, you just wanted it to look cool. And I asked him to forgive me. I put my hand over my wife's leg. Put her hand on mine. I, we didn't haul her fire. We didn't get mad at each other. We just, I was processing myself. God, what, what can I do? And I have to learn to compromise. Some areas, but there's some areas I will not come. This platform is one of them, just so you know. I will not compromise this platform for anybody or anything. Take God out of the box. Let Him move in you how He wants to move. Let him do in you what he wants to do. He's got healing for you. There's hope. You've been beaten, there's hope. Forgive. Forgive those who have wrongfully did you wrong. It was hard. But it's possible. Because... Through Christ, all things are possible. Even that forgiveness. He loves all of you deeply. He loved you when you were sinning. He loved you when you mess up. He loves you when you're caught up in the worst thing. He loves you. We love you here at Lock of Love. It's our goal to love you and love you well don't understand us, get to know us. You'll understand that. There's not a mean bone in our body. Tell you not, there's not a mean bone. We might not do everything right all the time, but we're seeking Him. And we are perfecting those things in our life that God is showing us. We're not going to give up too soon. No matter how discouraged we get sometimes, no matter how heavy it gets sometimes, we're not going to quit. There's something here. He's doing something in this city, in this region. He wants to use you to do it. He wants to use you to do it. Clean your lives up. Then just make it a moment of prayer, but make it a lifestyle. Being clean. Being whole. All the restaurants are still open. You guys are good. Let my 